Ariana, she is going to talk about synonasal anatomy from the surgeon's perspective. So hello everybody. Uh, I'm happy to talk uh, at that webinar and happy to be invited uh, by you, Dr. Puya Dehani. And um, as a one, uh, as I am one of the ERS Juniors member board, I would try to cover the most important po points of sinonasal anatomy, um, especially for juniors, for young specialists from basics. Uh, from surgeon's perspective. Uh, so the internal nose is constituted by two, two nasal cavities extending from the uh, nares to the coena uh, and separated by the nasal septum into two parts, left and right. Nasal cavity connect with paranasal sinuses, nasopharynx, and through foramen sphenopalatinum with uh, pterygopalatine fossa. Uh, each, of, each, uh, uh, each part of the nasal cavity has four walls. Medial, which is represented by septum, which is composed of cartilaginous uh, part and uh, bony segments, let, let, and lateral, uh, which has terminates on it and is a very complex anatomical structure, structure and very important area uh, clinically. Roof and the floor. Um, blood supply uh, to the nasal cavity is done by terminal branches of the maxillary and facial arteries, originate from external carotid artery uh, and uh, ethmoidal branches of the ophthalmic artery, which originates from the internal carotid artery. So uh, when we look um, into the nose, uh, the first thing we pay attention is a nasal septum, uh, which can be deviated or not, spore or something with it, inferior turbinate, which can be also enlarged or normal volume, uh, and uh, um, inferior meatus, uh, the area of the lateral wall of the nose covered medially by the inferior turbinate. Uh, uh, into which the nasolacrimal duct opens, and middle uh, turbinate, which is uh, the one of the uh, important landmarks, middle turbinate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, uh, so uh, here you can see the general endoscopic view of the middle meatus demonstrate the uncinate process, uh, here ethmoidal bulla and middle turbinates. Let's talk about uncinate process as it, it is also important um, landmark and important structure um, when we talk about endoscopic sinus surgery. Um, so um, uncinate process is located in the lateral nasal wall and consists of a small bony plate covered by mucosa. It starts anterior superiorly and slants posterior inferiorly when viewed in the sagittal plane. Its posterior free edge borders on the anterior surface of the ethmoid uh, bulla, forming a gap only a few millimeters wide. Uh, so uh, there is um, important to mention a uh, variation of the attachment of uncinate process. So it can attach to, um, uh, to the orbit to lamina papyracea, uh, to the uh, skull base or to uh, the um, middle turbinate. But uh, there are multiple variations seen which may alter uh, the frontal sinus drainage uh, pathway. Uh, ethmoid bulla. So here you can see an endoscopic uh, view. Here you can see an elongated uncinate process and enlarged uh, bulla ethmoidalis. Uh, so, ethmoidal bulla located with the middle meatus directly posterior to the uncinate process and anterior to the basal lamella of the middle turbinate. The ethmoid bulla is the largest and most constant of the ethmoid cells. 
it may show varying uh, degrees of pneumatization and is therefore variable in its size. A heavily pneumatized uh, small alveola may cause significant uh, narrowing of the middle meatus. Uh, Adronasi, uh, so uh, Adronasi cells, um, here you can see Adronasi cells, is the most anterior part of the ethmoid and may be seen on intranasal examination as a small prominence on the lateral nasal wall just anterior to the attachment of the middle turbinate. It's thought to be most superior remnant of the first ethmoturbinal nasoturbinal. It has a variable degree of pneumatization depending on the method of assessment. Um, so here you can see Adrian uh, Nazi before and here post opening Adrian Nazi cells. Uh, yeah. And now we talk about middle turbinate. It uh, is an integral part of the ethmoid bone having a number uh, of attachments. It may show varying degrees of pneumatization in its anterior or posterior portion, forming a substantial cell called the conhablosa. This may cause a nasal airway obstruction or by narrowing the middle meatus may cause ventilation problem head with headaches and recurrent rhinosinusitis. Uh, the lateral, um, uh, uh, lateral um, lower the middle turbinate borders on key structure as the up semilunar hiatus, ethmoid infundibulum, lateral sinus, and frontal recess. Here you can see a paradoxal middle turbinate uh, occurs when the normal convex curvature of the middle turbinate is reserved. Uh, middle meatus, here you can see middle meatus, the area of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity covered medially by the middle turbinate, receiving drainage from the anterior ethmoid, frontal, and maxillar sinuses. Uh, it was mentioned on the osteometal complex, which is very important also in sinonasal anatomy. So osteomyotal complex is a functional entity, entity uh, that represents a confluence of the drainage pathway of the maxillary, anterior ethmoid, and frontal sinuses. An osteomyotal complex composed of several structures within the middle meatus, uh, including uncinate process, here you can see incinerate process, uh, ethmoid infundibulum, the anterior ethmoid air cells, maxillary and frontal sinuses. The osteomyotal unit is very important in structure as even small amount of inflammation can lead to disease within maxilla maxillary or frontal sinus. Mm -hmm. For better understanding the surgical approaches, I would like to stop on this uh, table, which I find uh, useful. And with this, maybe uh, old modish, but also uh, useful um, schema. Uh, the structures called ethmo uh, turbinals, middle, superior, and supreme. Uh, the uncinate process, the adrenazi, and the ethmoid bulla, the attachment of these structure to the lateral nasal wall are the lamella. Oh, no, it's too, are the lamella with the following nomenclature. So there are five of uh, um, lamella, there exist five lamella with the following nomenclature. First basal lamella is a lateral um, extension of the uncinate process. Second lamella, basal lamella, lateral extension of the ethmoid bulla. Uh, third basal lamella, attachment of the middle turbinate. 
and fourth basal lamella attachment of the super uh, turbinate and fifth basal lamella attachment of supreme turbinate when it's present. Uh, I also find this um, uh, slide important. Here you can see schematic uh, drawing in the axial plane through the frontal uh, portion of basal lamella uh, uh, of the middle turbinate in red. Uh, it's like a um, traffic light where you can go into uh, or, or you have to pay attention on such structure. Green is uncinate process, yellow ethmoid bulla, and uh, blue uh, basal um, lamella of superior turbinate. So uh, when we talk about uh, maxillary sinus, uh, the maxillary bone has a body and four processes, zygomatic, frontal, alveolar, and palatine. It articulates with the frontal, ethmoid, palatine, nasal, zygomatic, lacrimal, inferior turbinate, and vomer, as well as the maxillary bone of the uh, opposite side. The natural ostium of uh, um, the maxillary sinus is located immediately posterior of the nasal lacrimal duct of the base of the ethmoidal infundibulum and is covered by transition of the uncinate process from its vertical to horizontal part. Hmm. The roof of the sinus forms the majority of the orbital floor and is trans, uh, traversed by the infraorbital channel here. Uh, the uh, channel contains the infraorbital nerve and vessels and opens on the anterior surface of the maxilla at the infraorbital forearm. Uh, the lateral nasal wall contains bony fontanelles composed of nasal mucosa, a small layer of connective tissue and sinus mucosa, the anterior and posterior fontanelles may perforate, creating accessory ostiums that can be mistaken for the natural maxillary sinus ostia. Posterior accessory ostia are more frequent and occur in 20-23% of people. Uh, there are a lot of anatomic variation of sinonasal structures. Some of them I have already mentioned before. And uh, as my ne uh, next uh, presenter is, uh, will talk about uh, CT scans and uh, anatomic er variation, I, I suppose. So I would like to um, stop on uh, color cells. So so hollow cells, infraorbital cells, is an anterior or posterior ethmoidal cells that develops here uh, into the orbital floor, where it may narrow the adjacent maxillary sinus ostium or infundibulum. It may be defined as any ethmoidal cells which pneumatizes inferior to the orbital floor and lateral to a line parallel with the lamina papyration. Mm. On these cells, oops, uh, here you can see on all these cells, or ethmoidal cells, a posterior ethmoidal cells, which develops lateral and or superiorly to the sphenoid sinus. The sphenoid sinus is then more medial and inferior than usual, and the optic nerve uh, may lie within the sphenoethmoidal cell rather than in the lateral wall of the sphenoid sinus. Uh, the cervical node in that occasion, this cell renders the optic nerve and internal carotid artery uh, at risk. Um, so to conclude, I would like to say that understanding of uh, the sinonasal anatomy is paramount to successful surgical treatment and avoidance of complication. Anatomic uh, variations are relatively common and we should pay attention on it. 
the pathogenic role of each anatomic variation should be evaluated on an individual basis. And before surgery, surgeon needs to fully review all the CT scans in the, three, uh, in the 3D planes and understand anatomy. What you can uh, hear from uh, the next presenter um, from Graz Medical University, Axel Wolf. So here I, uh, I find useful this slide because it's really the most uh, important uh, literature where you can find and where I found a lot of uh, anatomic, uh, basics, anatomic, uh, uh, sinonasal anatomics uh, for, from surgeon, uh, surgeon's perspective. And thank you for your attention. So thank you, Mariana, for your presentation, which was, of course, uh, one of the uh, short presentation about the whole anatomy of, uh, um, uh, of, the, of any